Back in 2010, I made this custom toolbox boombox with car stereo gear, but that wasn't enough. I had to add a subwoofer component too to the bottom. I incorporated a sealed lead acid battery for the car stereo amplifier that was on the bottom as well and just had RCA cables going from the toolbox down to the amplifier. And yes, it thumped, but man, was it heavy and it was big. Fast forward a couple years, I had an idea to put everything in a waterproof style case. Just never got around to finishing it. But looking today at the Built Not Bought Boomboxes group on Facebook, guys are doing this with six and a half inch speakers on the front and subwoofers on the back. And I also have another example here from Reed. This one has the active subwoofer on the front and both of the mids and highs also on the front. If we take a look on the inside, you will see there's a small amplifier down here on the right side. Now what's that all about? This is a 2.1 amplifier and we got a few in and we're gonna check those out today. The first model I got in is the MT21 or the ZK MT21. And yes, this one does come with a couple of different parts you have to put together, the top and the bottom, as well as the screws and a few little metal posts. Now these are available on Amazon for around $15, super cheap and they promise 50 watts plus 50 watts for your stereo channels and 100 watts for the sub channel. Again, it does come with all the parts to put it together. I didn't show this one assembled. I will show one, the other model that I got in and I'll show how to assemble it. But you can see it's got five knobs across the front. We'll talk about those here right off the bat. It's got a subwoofer frequency and volume knob. Also it has right and left channel, bass and treble. And then we have the main volume, which is a master volume for all the channels together. On the back, we have the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input. We have the output for all the speakers, including the subwoofer, left and right channel. Also, we have the DC jack for 12 to 24 volts. The specs include a domestic power chip. We'll get into that. A large heat sink, high grade wiring terminals, treble, bass and subwoofer controls. This is a 2.1 amplifier board that has Bluetooth built in as well. And now's a good time to go ahead and power on the unit. And let's go ahead and get it connected to Bluetooth to see how that works. if you can tell by the video but there was a little bit of noise in the bluetooth also the sound quality to me just something wasn't quite right according to the specs provided this has a hi-fi chip for the amplifier chip now we thought it was the tpa 3116 but unfortunately it is the cs 8673e which is a generic counterpart and in my opinion not a very good chip i would want to get the one with the tpa chip now let's try the two channel test at 24 volts, one kilohertz. According to the spec sheet, we should be looking at 50 watts per channel at four ohms. So let's uh, try it out on the amp dyno and see what we get here. Again, the amp dyno shows 14.74, but we're actually feeding the amplifier 24 volts. You can see it count up here on channel one and then channel two catches up. That's because there was some distortion on channel two, but anyway, we got 45 watts per channel. We ran it again uncertified, which takes us up to the clipping point. You'll see that it counts cleanly here. Let's see what we get total. Probably gonna be right about the same. 46 watts per channel at four ohms, which rated 50, so it's actually not that far off. Now, I wasn't sure initially that this amp couldn't run at two ohms, but I did it two ohms on the main channels here. Let's see what we get here. Uncertified up to the clipping point. Again, one kilohertz is the track. We do have the subwoofer loaded down with a four ohm load. And you can see about 78 watts average per channel at 24 volts. Next up, we wanted to try the sub channel, 24 volts with a 40 Hertz track. And again, according to the specs, it's only rated at four ohms and eight ohms. At four ohms, it's rated hundred watts. So we're gonna try four ohms and two ohms. 
Let's see what we get here. Certified, four ohms, 40 hertz with 24 volts of input. And yeah, not a whole lot. 50 watts where it's rated 100. So that's well under what they rate it. But next up, we're gonna set it to two ohms. Let's see if we can get that 100 watts at two ohms. Can we? It's counting. Is it gonna get there? No, it stops at 77 watts. Now I'm not gonna make you sit through all the different tests, but you can pause this if you wanna see. I ran all the tests at four ohms and two ohms at 12, 20, and 24 volts. You can see the outcome here. Also the sub-channel, that 100 watts they rated at, yeah, about half that. <laughs> we got 50 watts at four ohms, 24 volts. You can see the other results as well. The next amp I got in was the HT21 or ZK HT21. Again, this one came in parts as well. You can see it has a screwdriver, has a power plug, also the knobs for the front. And then we have the documentation sheet or the owner's manual. One side is in English, the other side is in Chinese. And then we have all the screws and the little standoffs and all that that you need to put it together, which we're gonna show in a minute. And of course, the top and the bottom plates. So I mean, this gives you a little bit more of the DIY feel, you know? You gotta put your amp together. Not really, I mean, you're really just putting on the top and the bottom. Somebody's already done the hard work of soldering all the components here. This is the main power board here. You can see it does have a fan in the center with a large heat sink to keep the two chips cool. And it shows you what's in the package. You've pretty much just seen all that we've just shown it. Again, I think this part's fun because it gives you more of the, hey, I built this myself aspect. And that's what we're gonna do here. So let's get you some music in the background and show you how to assemble it. Now before we put on the top panel, we're gonna do a flyover here and show you some of the internal components, show you them up and close so you can gaze over and see what this thing is made of. This amplifier incorporates two of the TDA7498E Class D chips which are rated to up to 160 watts by two plus 220 by one. Of course, we cannot forget to attach the knobs here to the front. I like to try to get these lined up so they match properly. And here you can see the amplifier. This is the HT21, and it does have a fan there in the center to keep it nice and cool. This is 160 by two plus 220 by one. Across the front, you'll see all the different knobs. It does have the same knobs as far as the other amp we show, but this one also has the USB connection on the front. They call it U-Disc. Uh, I don't know why, it's not mine, it's yours. It is said to support up to 32 gigabytes of FAT32 format. And yes, I'm talking about the format of the disc, not your mama. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. In addition to the USB input and also all the dials for the adjustments of volume, treble, bass, and on and off, we also have a multifunction button here on the right. They refer to as the dial button, which if you press it in, it pauses or plays or long presses to switch the mode. And if you do left as previous song, if you hold it down, it is volume down. And right is next song or hold it down for volume positive. Across the back of the unit, we have power input as well as auxiliary input, and then we also have the speaker outputs. We'll first start here on the left with the auxiliary input is a 3.5 millimeter stereo input jack for inputs from any of your sources like computers, MP3 players, things like that. In the middle, we have the outputs for the speaker terminals, which includes left, right, as well as subwoofer. Then we have two DC jacks, 15 volt to 36 volt, it also comes with an adapter, but you can also use a barrel connector as well. In this case, I'd already used the barrel connector for the previous amp that I'd shown in the earlier part of the video. So we're just gonna continue to use that here. We're just gonna bump up the voltage up to 30 volts to do our sample test here. First off, we're gonna plug in a USB thumb drive and see how it works.
break your neck, be going crazy. Now, to my ears, this amplifier sounded much better than the first one we tried and had much more power for the subwoofer as well. Now, in order to hook up Bluetooth with this, very simple. All you do is power on the unit and then you check your phone and look for the WZBT 2.0 and then it's there or 5.0. Very simple. Now we're going to try this amp out on the dyno two channel test. We're going to use 30 volts because my power supply does not go up to 36. It only goes up to 30. And again, you can disregard the uh, voltage shown on the dyno because it's powered separately. Let's try certified test first at 30 volt, one kilohertz. And there you go. It keeps counting up. 77 and 74 watts so that's uh not too bad here but again 30 volt of input it is rated to do 160 watts at 36 volts i don't think it's going to do anywhere near that but again we're seeing about half of what these things are rated to do as they're actually doing but check out the two ohm test we're getting over 100 watts per channel which was pretty impressive now let's try the subsection 30 volts, 40 hertz. It is rated 200 watts at 36 volts. Again, we're feeding it 30 volts. So see how close we get here. Certified test is up to 1% distortion. Let's see what we get. It's counting kind of slow. <laughs> there we go, 88 watts at 24 volts. Again, uh, well below the 200 watts that it's rated. But let's uh, reset the dyno here and try it certified at 2 ohms. See what we get here. Can we get over 100 watts at 2 ohms? That would put us about half of, again, what it's rated. Oh, look at this. 145 at 2 ohms on the sub-channel. Big numbers. Now, here are the results. Noting that the amplifier is rated for 15 to 36 volts of DC input, I did 12, 24, and 30 for these tests and you can see the results. I did that mainly because of batteries that are available and what people are using, what people are charging to. So this way will give you an idea of what you should really expect. Let's move on to the pros and cons. Obviously for the price, these can't really be beat. They also have very good input voltage capability from nine volts up to 24 or 36. Bluetooth auxiliary for one app, USB is added for the other. 2.1 flexibility, nice to add a subwoofer. Bass and treble adjustments are nice. They're very compact, very small. Decent sound quality on HT21, but I would pass on the MT21. Things that could be better, the actual versus rated power, obviously. Sound quality on the MT21, not very good. The USB is too close to the knob adjustment on the HT21. Also, there's 20 kilohertz noise on the HT21, which I can't hear. Also, the speaker terminals are pretty small. Just make sure you realize that. Also, you need to partially assemble both of these, which is actually kind of fun. And no power supply or battery is included, so you will need to provide that yourself. Now, for fun, I hooked this up to my RTA, which is a real-time analyzer here, showing the frequency response. You can see here, I'm playing with the sub-channel just to see what it does. And uh, sub-channel works pretty good here on the MT-21. I like how it's crossed over. The one thing I did notice is you had to turn up the bass adjustment all the way to be able to get more of a uh, flat response across the board, but obviously you don't want your small speakers playing bass notes, so it's okay to have a little bit of a slope there on the lower end, but uh, it's kind of neat just seeing this, how it works in person. Now we move over to the MT-21. Right off the bat, I really couldn't believe what was showing up here on the chart. On the far right at 20 kilohertz, it had a strong signal at 20 kilohertz. Now, I'm too old to hear this, so I wouldn't hear it. Probably my dog did. It's probably why he was howling. Anyway, it's something I did notice on the display here, but again, I didn't hear it, but it is something to note. Again, I do like the HT21 overall. I would pass on the MT21. Thanks as always for watching. Make sure you smash me a thumbs up, comment, and like. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here.